is me, Shanti, and you're watching me on my YouTube channel, The Layovi. special guest with me we have Justina hi guys okay we're gonna be asking her a few questions so if you're watching me in this video for the first time don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click on the red button next to it just so that you'll be receiving notifications whenever new videos like this go up on my channel and we shall get started with the interview let's hear from you say a few words about yourself okay so to start off with my name is Justina so a lot of people know me by the name of Justina and um, to the recent Days. People know me now as a professional makeup artist in the Indian industry or the Tamil industry. So I engage a lot with young women and um, being part of the uh, very big important day as a makeup artist for them. So that's just what I do now. Um, a little bit more of who I was before. I was a flight attendant flying for AirAsia for about two and a half years. That's literally where I started to do a bit of makeup. And then having a mom who's been in this industry for the last 25 years, I've started... Um, Wait, 25 years you say? 25 so years. she's got a long line of history when yeah. it comes to makeup. Yes, so she has been there, been doing it from the first till today. She's still with me, she still works with me, she still follows me to all my clients. Um, yeah, we kind of work together now a lot. Regardless, early morning, midnight, she comes with me. Every single one of them? Every single one of them. And every single one of them wants her to be there because she does an amazing sari time. Nice. Yes. So how did the transition was for you? Was it easy? Was it there Transition like from being from an like yeah. yeah. In terms of the transitioning, it was not so much of a weight there because makeup was there and then here the makeup is also here. So. Mm. I kind of connected pretty well and you know when you're a cabin crew you need to look beautiful at all time like you need to have makeup all time um, yeah I think it kind of brought in a lot of confidence in me like you put in you put on makeup you face people you talk to people and um, furthermore I'm, I'm a bit more of a people person I love to meet new people I love to you know get to know people so for that in fact, I really loved what I was doing, I was flying. And then when my mom persuaded me to come into this, it wasn't like a drastic change for me. It was, it was pretty easy for me to come in and, you know, do this after that. Lovely. So how we actually got connected is via Instagram. A lot of who are following us on Instagram actually want to see us in the same frame. So here we are today in the same frame right. like, and what actually brought us together is that I love giving back to the society and Justina is someone who also loves doing something for a good cause so we're going to be talking to her a little bit about her charity classes that she's been doing for the past three years would you like to elaborate a little yes. bit on that sure sure so giving back has always been there and i've always believed like it shouldn't be one way it has to be two ways and it shouldn't always be just taking it needs to be it needs to be a circle we need to also give back i've always been very little little parts of this small homes girls you know um, unfortunate kids and so on so then as I was in this profession being a makeup artist and I was just one day I was just sitting back and I was just thinking like there needs to be something that I want to do and give back something that's valuable and of course it's better if it's women related you know ladies related young girls related at that point of time I think if I'm not wrong it was it was the beginning of October and I noticed and I realized it was actually the Pinktober month where we uh, where it's a, you know it's a month where we dedicate for um, cancer survivors, breast cancer survivors. Mm. So I just had an idea, that, you know, in my head, and I said, okay, why not we do a class? Because I was I was already planning to do a lot of teachings. So why not we do a class? Um, bring a lot of young women out there who also wants to learn makeup, but at the same time, the motive of it was to give back to this. Um, to the center so I, I got in touch with the Cancer Society of Malaysia so these guys um, accepted my uh, request and they said okay let's do this and then for them this was something very very new they never had anybody coming to them and saying look I'm going to teach makeup collect the whatever collection that we get we're going to give it to you so my aim was to not take back anything but just to give on that one particular day so from then on I've decided every year once I must dedicate one day for me to give everything that I do for that day 
So it was a two week planning, it was very last minute, it was a two weeks planning. A lot of people came in and supported us and we gathered about 50 to 60 people. We also have additional 20 survivors joining us, moms, single moms, I mean, you know, all those going through um, a hard time. And it was really nice to have them there and then we, we actually also gathered a lot of goodies. People were, a lot of brands were also taking part for them to, yeah, like sponsors. Um, like New Nature was there, you know, we, we get back a lot to these guys who joined us. It was one day of just giving and it felt amazing. Yeah, so it's the fourth year. We've already completed three rounds of um, giving back to the society. So every year, October, um, is the month that I dedicate myself to give back to the society. And last year again, we went back to um, the same center. And then it was really amazing. It was such a good feeling after we came back home. Doesn't it give you like some sort of immense, you know, oh, emotional yeah. satisfaction from? Definitely, it's 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 something that I cannot buy, or it's something that nobody can pay me and say have this feeling. No, mm. no, never. Yeah. It's 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 a different feeling all over. Yes, yeah. a very commendable job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all the best. If you're living in any part of Malaysia, where can we find you in the month of October? I've decided that it's going to be National Cancer Society of Malaysia from now on. So every every year, once a month that one date that I would decide, it would definitely fall on a weekend so mm -hmm. that a lot of other girls can come and join us and um, it will be with them because they have given me the best support and I think the fact that they valued what we did for them was bigger than anything so really nice, uh, I met this lady there by the name of Rosie so she's the person in charge and I've never met someone like her before such a warm hearted person okay. She also has a makeup academy and uh, you want to elaborate? Yeah, 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 sure. So, Justina Makeup Academy was actually formed uh, two years ago, two, two, two and a half years now. Two years ago, um, we used to do small classes. That's when I actually started doing this as a full time job with my brides and my classes. Small classes that are run on a monthly basis. So, we have small classes that comes in with um, seven to eight students a month. It's a three day program that I run in the academy. And then we do one-on-one -on -one classes, we do private lessons, we do um, um, other designated classes like hair classes or just makeup or just sari. Um, yeah, so we have that in, in very nearby to my place. It's in Kapol, located in Kapol. It's a very small um, space, but yeah, somewhere that I can go back to and be happy. Nice. I yeah. believe you're someone who loves teaching. Yes. How yes. has it been for you? Like uh, you mentioned earlier, before this interview had actually is taking place right now, we had an informal chat, and she had actually mentioned that you've already had seven batches. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Twenty-six. Oh my yeah. God. Twenty-six. Coming twenty-seven next uh, month. Yeah. How has it been, like you know, uh, moving all this twenty-six batch of really young, inspiring women yeah. to become the yes. next batch of makeup artists? Yes. Yeah. Of course, we see how this industry is growing. You know, every girl out there wants to. Beautiful. They want to have makeup on. I mean, in a general um, opinion, anyone who wants to attend the friends' wedding wants to get dolled up, wants to put on makeup, wants to go in there and look good and stuff. So the industry itself has grown. Makeup itself has grown so big, and um, a lot of people have started accepting it in, in mm -hmm. a better way. And um, it's just that I wanted to, you know, come up with uh, a center where I can teach the right thing to do the right thing. And I had a combination students where whether they are wanting to be a makeup artist, um, new ones, someone who wants to learn makeup for themselves. I had moms and daughters coming in together. Yeah, so I saw a lot of people and you know, even in the age group of 54, 55, one, this one auntie came in with the age of 56 if I'm not wrong. You know, the fact that she's at that age but the enthusiasm that she had, like, you know, the, the power, the, the strength that she had, she's like, no, I'm going to learn these and do these for my clients. So she's already a makeup artist, but she's away from the city. She's not somewhere in the city. So she's like, no, I want to learn and do better. But at that age, so that made me really happy. I was like, wow, you know, she trusts my work and she's here today. So many different background, different um, people. I had doctors, I had pharmacists, I had engineers. You have a blogger. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have you. So I meet people. So one of the other things is I love meeting new people and um, if you see from what I was doing to what I'm doing now, I'm still meeting people on a pretty frequent, um, you know, 
days, weekends, my brides are new to me, they are someone who I've not met. Um, students, they're very new to me. And every batch for the last 26 batches, I meet different people, over 100 over people. And then the good thing that I learned from here is also to have an engagement with my students. Um, when I need something, I just got to call them and say, look, I'm doing this program, can you guys come and come and give your support? And they'll be there the next minute. So that is what I really want to achieve end of the day, not just meet them and let them go back and tomorrow when I see them, if I don't know them, what's the use of me even having that one day? So I would, from this class, I would also want to have, grow my family bigger in terms of engagement. There's so many girls out there and it's really nice to get to know everybody in, in person because I spend a good three days with them when it's um, the monthly master classes that happens. Okay, so her master classes are usually three days long. Are there going to be any more for the, for the year of yeah. 2019? We have started it two years ago, so now I'm coming into the two, completed 26 batches. So 27 in April, 28 in uh, May, and then I've got uh, 29th in Penang. So probably 30 by the end of the year, but yeah. Are you having any thoughts about coming to Singapore? Yes, yeah, so I have been receiving a lot of um, requests from so many makeup artists. I, I want to come, but I just don't have the right time to come. And I don't want to come and do a one-day class. I think this is something that I've told the many people who have approached me to come and do a class in Singapore. And I keep telling them I don't believe in doing a one-day um, thing. Because I have the time, Like I should be able to um, give myself that time and to deliver what I want to deliver to them and I say I need three days or at least two days so when it's two days and three days um, I think there's a bit of a challenge because there's a lot of girls working and all that so that's when I need to wait till I get a weekend which is very difficult because we work on weekend yeah uh -huh. so yeah so that's why I'm not able to decide and set a date to come Yet. And I hope it's in the making. We would love to see you in yes, Singapore. Yes, 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 yeah. I would love to too. <laughs> okay, where do you see yourself in the next uh, perhaps five to ten years time? I would say this is the dream that I want to... You're living the dream? Yes, I'm living in the dream. I want to make a, an academy, okay, like a proper academy with um, a set of teachers, lecturers to come and teach. Um, that's where I see, uh, you know, managing my own academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah to, you know, students from different range of age, after school leavers, young talents, young moms, whoever. So we have different types of courses available for them. So that's that is something that I've always been thinking about and wanting to do. And also move from being a makeup artist alone into this because the generation grows, the young generations are coming into the industry. I think they should also take part and and, and make their names. That's yeah. an amazing opportunity to look out for. So <laughs> is there any takeaway that you would like to share with some of the viewers who have been contemplating whether they should be dipping their feet into the makeup artistry field? Okay. My takeaway would be that there's a lot of girls that I meet. So the thing that I that I see is I meet a lot of them who wants to do this. But say I meet ten of them. At the end of the fourth day or the third day of class, four would be like, okay, I want to do this. The other six would be like, okay, do I have to do this? So they see a little bit of a step back for them. So I think it's very important that you decide and know what you want to do. Because personally, I did, I never saw myself as a makeup artist, right? Only after I started doing makeup, see how far she's come along the way. Yes, so only after I started be, being uh, doing this, I became passionate about it. So there's, there's no such thing that you need to be passionate about it, only then you can do it. So that's mm. one thing. Like if you think you are comfortable and you're confident that you can take this up, I think you should try. Give it a try to at least know whether you can do this or not. Don't give up before that and don't, mm. you know, don't say no before you even try. And at the same time, to people who have got the luxury of doing this, if you've got the chance, if you've got the um, ability to learn this thing, don't waste it. Give it a go, try, because this industry is growing. Makeup industry is just growing everywhere around the world, not just this part of the world. So the opportunity is big, you can travel and do this. Because I love traveling as well, I've traveled and beached in different countries in Europe, in China and everything. So I think that's just a bonus for me because of course 
don't wait for the opportunity to come go look for the opportunity as well sometimes say and makeup industry don't think twice if you have the opportunity do it amazing advice <laughs> i think we don't hear this a lot enough usually it's like a face kind of thing like you know yeah. when someone's doing it i want to try it also emulate the same kind of like a end result but we are not going to do the effort that's required then it's a big waste of time but you should definitely try if you want to pursue this yeah. makeup artistry don't say no before say you even no. try i think yeah. that's a huge takeaway from this video yeah. is there anything else you would like to share for your viewers around the world you yes, almost look like a global family <laughs> Where have you been to with your master class? Where so the you? very first international master class was actually in Chennai. Um, in <laughs> Chennai, yes, in Chennai. Uh, that was a very small class, and then it was um, London. It was London after that. It was a small class as well, like within ten. And then it was um, Germany last year. It was an amazing support. You know, it feels so good because you meet people with the same interest from different part of world. So that gives me a different level of satisfaction as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you keep in touch with them, you connect to them, and you go like, "Hey, I have friends there." You know, it's it's really nice. After Germany was France last year, September, and then January 2019 was Chennai, and that was a huge. Huge class, and they're calling me back again. Chennai, please wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's something special about Chennai. I have that feeling. Too. Yeah, like, yeah. Chennai keeps calling you. Like, mm. I can't help but notice a plug sitting on one of the bookshelves. I'm actually in Justina's uh, house right now, <laughs> so I really want her to share this piece of um, token of appreciation that I think has not been presented to the world before so I would really like yeah. Justina to hold this up but this is actually in appreciation for the support and the cause that she's actually worked with the National Cancer Society, Society of Malaysia. Malaysia that's amazing so that's it for today's video guys I really hope you enjoy watching my interview with Justina she's located in KL and if you'd like to know more about what she does and her portfolio that's available on Instagram I'll put a link to it right down in this video below and if you are not subscribed already please do so all that will be needed is for you to click on the subscribe button right down this video make sure to click on the bell icon next to it just so that you'll be updated and notified whenever new videos like this go up on my channel that's it for today's video guys i shall see you very soon in my next week's video bye guys bye.